Hey guys, Tammy here, and I'm starting something new on my YouTube's channel called Tammy Presents, okay, where I showcase some of the funniest motherfuckers out there, all right? And I post their stand-up special to my YouTube's channel, okay? First up, Rafe Williams, baby. Go ahead. My special is called Young Grandpa, and it starts right now. Let's just get this out of the way. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my life. Uh, I found out when I was 36 years old that I was a grandfather. That is the appropriate response for that. Stone Cold Silence is exactly how I responded when I found out. I had a son at a very young age and he returned the favor <laughs> by giving me a granddaughter when he turned 15 because my family likes to fuck like we're on the Oregon Trail. <laughs> Losing people to typhoid apparently. We got to get to fucking or we're never gonna make it to Portland. <laughs> so thanks to my son's brilliant discretion, I became a 36-year-old peepaw <laughs> trying to make it in stand-up comedy. And I don't know how much you guys know about showbiz, but I'll let you in on a secret. That is a small-ass window of relatability. <laughs> <laughs> and it hurt, man. It hurt, to be honest with you, it hurt my ego to find out I was a grandpa in my 30s because I still feel cool. Got a cool job, cool friends. In my eyes, grandpas aren't typically cool, so my ego took a hit. But I can tell you this, I don't care how cool you think you are. When you hold your firstborn grandchild in your arms and she fits in the palm of your hand and you hold her up against your chest for the first time and you feel her little heartbeat against your big heartbeat and she smiles at you for the first time in history, I don't care how cool you think you are, something inside you changes instantly. Like, Fox News has been making a lot of sense to me lately. <laughs> hey, Tucker Carlson's got some good points. That's all I'm saying, guys. <laughs> I started working out at the gym with my jeans on, which is so fucking hot. I don't recommend it. It's hot. I'm accusing all the neighborhood kids of stealing gas out of my garage. <laughs> I don't even have a garage. I live in a third floor walk-up apartment. <laughs> Got my eye on a pair of New Balance 880s, white on white. Yeah, the white ones with the blue end. This guy knows what I'm talking about, right, sir? Fuck yeah, dude. When you're a grandpa, you get issued two pair of New Balance. One to mow the grass, one to wear to weddings. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know. It did change some stuff for me, whether I liked it or not. Finding out I was a grandpa in my 30s, my social life changed. You know what I mean? Like, I was single when I found out. That's a tough one. Because I can promise you guys this, there ain't nobody trying to meet Pop Pop's girlfriend at Thanksgiving. <laughs> How do you bury that lead in an online dating profile? You're like, I'm looking for somebody who loves to laugh, loves to travel, wants to be called Mima for the rest of her natural life. <laughs> That's a tough sell. But I'm dating somebody now, and she's cool, but she doesn't have any kids of her own, you know? I wasn't great at being a young dad, but I think I can crush this young grandpa gig, but that means I want to focus on being a gramps, which means I want to get a vasectomy. Now, I brought this vasectomy up at her and I's last pitch meeting, our anniversary dinner. Didn't go great. <laughs> she said, I feel like you're being selfish and overreactive and narcissistic because you found out you're a grandpa in your 30s and I can't think of a single reason a man your age would need that operation. I said, well, I can tell you a reason, sweetheart, and I can sum it up for you in a single sentence that I never, ever, ever want to say to my granddaughter. Can you hold your uncle for a minute? Because he's being super fussy right now. <laughs> I 
I'm just trying to finish this golf tee game of Cracker Barrel, figure out if I'm a goddamn genius or not. <laughs> now, some Cracker Barrel folks on this side of the room, that joke was for you. <laughs> Bunch of one percenters over here, you've never had to feed a family of 12 for $1.75 before? You guys know what I'm talking about? That game where you jump the golf tees? Yeah, it'll fuck with your self-esteem real quick, I promise you. I had eight pegs left over. I was like, I think I have to get checked into a home. I don't know the rules. I'm legally an ignoramus. I gave the driver's license to the waitress. <laughs> it is weird, though, because I do want to be a good grandpa, you know? Like, I do. But I don't have any role models. You know what I mean? Like, I'm the first grandpa out of the gate. I'm like the Neil Armstrong of grandpas. That should scare all of you. I'm the next, I gotta decide what the next generation's gonna be. I need somebody to kind of coach me through it. It's not like I have a peer group. If I do, they're on Maury Povich and I don't want their opinion anyway. <laughs> so I've been putting myself out there trying to mingle with other single grandpas. Been hanging out at Denny's at two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> I was walking around buck naked in YMCA locker rooms, just giving advice to people whether they asked for it or not. Like, you want some stock tips? <laughs> Been hanging out at 5 a.m. in every Home Depot I can get my fat ass to. Do you guys know that, that that's where all your grandpas go? Did you guys know that? There are packs of roving grandpas in every Home Depot in the United States of America. Did you know that? Yeah, just hanging out for no reason, drinking coffee at 5 o'clock in the morning. You know why you can't find anyone at Home Depot? Because they're talking to your goddamn grandpa, that's why. <laughs> He's just shuffling around asking for 10 penny nails that he ain't even going to use. He's going to put them in a jar, screw them to the ceiling. That's what grandpas do. That's what they do. <laughs> they're just packs of roving grandpas floating around all day in every Home Depot, unsupervised on rascal scooters. You know how I found that out? I almost got into one of these little geriatric biker gangs. Yeah, and their leader kept a pretty shitty attitude with me. He came rolling up all cool, you know, out of aisle 12 on his 2016 hover round soft tail. <laughs> one hand on a handlebars, he had gang colors all over his sweater vest. Where there's originals just falling out the pocket. looks me up and down. He's like, you think you've got what it takes to be one of the Pop Pops? You don't smell like ointment to me, boy. Why don't you hop on the back of my hog and I'll roll your cherry ass down to lumber and see if you can even pick out a good white pine to build a birdhouse with. <laughs> I don't just want to complain, though. There's an upside to being a grandpa in your 30s, man. I had to dig deep, no doubt. But I think I figured it out. I think I found it. And I can be honest with you guys, you came out. You've been vulnerable just being in this building during a pandemic. So I feel like I can be vulnerable with you. I can understand what you're seeing up here, okay? It looks like a bro made a wish and the Joe Rogan podcast came to life. <laughs> now I'm a real boy. Like, I don't look like I stormed the Capitol, but... I look like I probably took the day off, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Just to keep an eye on things. <laughs> it does, though. I've kind of got a blue-collar vibe, you know what I mean? No one ever mistakes me for a pediatrician, let's put it that way. It's usually he's like, hey, did you and your dad pour my driveway last year? And I'm like, no, sir, I did not. And I've come to grips with the way I look on the outside. I'm cool with the rough and tumble, blue collar exterior you guys see up here, but it does make some stuff hard for me. Do you guys know how hard it is to buy weed at a party? <laughs> when you look like the world's shittiest undercover cop? <laughs> this looks like 21 Jump Street gives zero fucks about its program. <laughs> I actually had a lady say that to me not that long ago. She was like, you know, you remind me of that actor from 21 Jump Street, the movie. And I was like, <laughs> Channing Tatum, what's up? <laughs> and she was like, fuck no. <laughs> oh, Jonah Hill, the fat one, before he got lab band surgery. It's like, you know what, mom, fuck you. That's why I don't come home for Easter. <laughs> Always got something to say, bitch. 
my mom hates that joke. <laughs> it was hard to find the upside of being a grandpa in your 30s, but I did. Because I can be honest with you guys, I realize I've let myself go as a man, okay? I'm not in the prime of my life anymore. I'm not in the top 50% of sexy men in America. I probably never was. If we subcategorize into DILFs, dads I'd like to fuck. <laughs> Moving up, I might bust into the top 50%, maybe, but on the low end of that 50, right? There's a lot of hot dads out there. Johnny Depp is a dad. Ryan Gosling is a dad. But if we start talking about gilfs, grandpas I'd like to fuck? <laughs> Pop Pop's home. <laughs> Hell yeah, I gotta be in the top 10% easy. All I'm saying, you put my big ass in a wheelchair, you roll me into Shady Acres Nursing Home tonight, I'm knee deep in tapioca pudding and blue haired pussy. Am I right, ladies? <laughs> don't look away, ma'am, don't look away. I said it out loud, now we all gotta live with it, you know? If you guys take nothing else away from this show that you literally risked your lives to come to. <laughs> In a world that's gone topsy-turvy where we don't know we can count on anymore, you know? Supply chain's messed up, there's blizzards everywhere, we're on our 57th variant of COVID-19. There's one thing you can count on, you can lock in a little imaginary truth locket that you keep around your neck. And that is the undeniable fact that all of your grandmothers would furiously fuck the shit out of me. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. And statistically speaking, at least nine of your grandfathers. Uh, don't lock up on that joke, Edwardsville. Yeah, I like how progressive we pretend to be as a society until you think old granddad might lick a ding-dong and then all of a sudden... Back to the Stone Ages we go. He fought in Korea. He deserves to be happy, too. <laughs> oh, shit, we're getting wild in here now. I, uh, I do like being a grandpa, though, man. I do. I enjoy it. And I'm glad I have a granddaughter, because I'm from a family of all boys. I'm the oldest of three boys. My dad's the oldest of five boys. A lot of dude energy in my family. That's an energy I understand. Dude, energy's fun. Guys, we can admit that, right? It's a fun energy, but can we also admit it's a dumb energy? <laughs> We're not breaking any scholastic records over in dude camp. There's no highbrow humor coming out of there, right? Female energy, different. Volatile, dangerous. <laughs> Unpredictable. Still cool, but different. I guess what doesn't mix together well? Volatile and dumb. And that's pretty much what's been happening in my house for the last three years. Because <laughs> she's three years old now, man. And that's a fun age, but you got to get your shit together, you know? First two, like, if, clap if you're a parent in the house. Yeah. Of course, yes. Everyone here has dropped their kid. Every single person here, you know you did. You know you did. You came home from the hospital, you were tired as fuck, you were cradling them in bed, you heard a thump, you realized you fell asleep, you looked around, nobody saw. Nobody. No one saw. You picked him up, you looked him over, you went back to sleep. That's what happened. You won't tell anyone it happened, but we all fucking know it happened because it's happened to everybody. Plus, like, who's the kid going to tell? They can't call anybody. They don't know. They can't call a single person. They have no friends. But when they're three, they start to make friends. You got to get your shit together. You drop them at three, you get a visit from the government. That's not cool. So I've been trying to get my shit together, man, but it's hard. Like I said, dumb guy, dumb energy, gonna be real important to this story here in a little bit. Like I said, I'm also glad that I have a granddaughter. Cause ladies, I think your time has come. I think you're gonna take over the world. I think it's long overdue. I hope you can fix it. Sorry about the shape we left it in. Our bad. <laughs> and I want her to know that she has a man who loves her unconditionally and has her back to the day he dies. No questions asked, no strings attached. Cause every girl should have at least one man like that in their life. Yeah. Yep, that way when you guys take over, she spares my life. <laughs> I only work one hour a day, y'all. I can't go to the salt mines, I'm too pretty. 
too damn pretty. But, like I said, dumb guy, learning stuff. Like, did you guys know that three-year-old girls are way smarter than three-year-old boys are? Yeah. yeah, well, I did not know that, man. You don't have to be so fucking smug up there in the balcony. <laughs> That's the exact energy I'm discussing on stage right now. I didn't find that out until I found out I had an emotional terrorist living in my goddamn home. And she's waging a one-girl jihad on her grandpa's heart. That's what's going on in my home. She walked into my living room the other day and I was like, guess what, sweetheart? Grandpa loves you. And she just goes, hmm, no, and walked out of the room like a fucking gangster. Broke my heart in two in a place where I pay the goddamn mortgage. I'm like pacing around my own living room like the audacity this little hoe has to talk to me like that. Does she know who the fuck I am? What's going on in my house? She walked back in 10 minutes later while I'm still pacing around like a cheetah stalking her prey and she just goes, I switched my mind, people. I love you as well. I'm like, as well? Are you shitting me right now? You said Lalo instead of yellow this morning and now you're ending a sentence and a preposition and a British accent? You're a fucking savage. What is happening in my home right now? But I'm glad she's a savage, man, I am. Because it's a hard world. Sometimes you gotta be a savage to survive it. It gets tougher every day. And I don't want her to grow up and just settle for the first person that comes along. Guy, girl, I don't care, I'm woke. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a Democrat trapped in a Republican's body, y'all. <laughs> Which kind of makes me in the middle. <laughs> but I still got to deal with her for the rest of the, at least 16 years, right? I got to deal with her for the next 16 years. And if you want to get respect from a savage, you got to go savage. It's prison yard rules at my house, dude. You want respect, you got to go take respect. You know what I mean? You got to snatch respect if you want respect. And we did, we had to go get it. I had to go get my respect. This is tough because I wanna remind you guys, dumb guy, dumb energy, don't know a lot about women, gonna be real important to this story here in just a few seconds. We spent the 4th of July together. I did what any good white trash grandpa should do. I spent my whole stimulus check on fireworks. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, it was like white trash Disneyland in our trailer park, don't worry. <laughs> And clap if you're white trash, and some of you are. I can tell by the way you're behaving. Yeah. We know something rich folks don't know, and that's that if you're shooting a Roman candle straight up in the air on the 4th of July, you're having half the fun you could be having. Because you're supposed to shoot it as your brother as he flees in fear down the alleyway. Like they did in Rome. But I digress. We had a fun time. I did all my grandfatherly duties. We had fireworks, we had bubbles. Not small bubbles, dog, the big bubbles. We gotta spin in a circle to make the bubble, all right? I don't fuck around. <laughs> we spent the whole day together. We come inside, it's obviously hot. It's the 4th of July, and she tries to go savage on me like that. She comes inside and she goes, Peepaw, I'm hot. Bathe me. <laughs> I said, why don't you try putting that in the form of a question, dog? And she said, I said, bathe me. So I got scared and ran her some bath water. <laughs> and I put bubbles in the bath water because I don't fuck around as a grandpa. When I say I put bubbles in it, I 100% do mean Dawn dish soap. <laughs> she wasn't greasy at all when she got out, so don't judge me, okay? Her little butt cheeks was squeaking. I put her in the tub with her bubbles and her toys and I said, there you go, wash up, call me when you need me. And she goes, you're not going anywhere. I said, look, Cleopatra, you gotta stop talking to me like this and we're gonna fight, dude. And she goes, no, you got to bathe me. And I said, all right, you bathe you. And she goes, I said, bathe me. So I did, I washed her belly, her nose, her hair and her toes. And she looked me dead in the face and goes, don't forget to wash my hoo-ha, peepa. <laughs> I said, what the fuck did you just say to me? She said, don't forget to wash my hoo-ha, peepaw. I said, that's your job, you do that. She goes, I don't know how, peepaw. I said, ha, ha me neither, player. <laughs> and guess what? It's not like I can go fucking Google it real quick. <laughs> so you better figure out that loofah sponge or you're gonna be walking around with a dirty crotch because I promise you, peepaw ain't going out like that. <laughs> 
Think I'm gonna open my computer to an incognito window and type in three-year-old vagina? Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck that. The police, in my house. Fucking Chris Hansen from Datelines got me in a chokehold my own goddamn living room. I just left her there, dude. I hope she's okay. I really do. She's a good kid. She's resilient. I Gilbert Graped her, for those of you familiar with that movie. Yeah. She made it out. She's savage. She got out, I'm sure. Oh, man. Being a grandpa has also made me prejudiced unintentionally. I know. It just happens. It's a weird thing. You guys will see one day. Weird thing for me, though, is I didn't get prejudiced against, like, people younger than me or people for their religious beliefs or the color of their skin or any of the stuff that most of our grandpas were prejudiced about. I got prejudiced against my own generation for stuff that we did, for what we added to society. Having a little three-year-old angel bossing me around in the tub changed my perspective on some things. Like dick pics. Ha 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 ha, That's right, that's something we did. That's something our generation added. What did our grandparents do? They fought the Nazis, that's what they did. Our parents, rock and roll, the sexual revolution. They invented the internet. And what did we do with that internet? We clogged it with dicks, that's what we did with it. <laughs> and it was us. There was no generation before us, okay? That was us, so we have to own that, and that shit is gross. I know it was us, because I saw my dad's dick one time, okay? 1989, he was getting out of the shower, his towel fell off on accident. We didn't make eye contact for 13 years. <laughs> Let alone did he have the hubris to put it in portrait mode, slap a filter on it, and send it out into cyberspace. Damn. That's something we did. And now we gotta make it right. And I have further proof that it was us because I was in the United States Army in the year 2000, okay? That was less than a generation ago. And I was in basic training with a guy named Private Carter, who I thought was the weirdest guy I'd ever met because he came up to me one day in basic training and he goes, hey, Williams. Come here, brother. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, man. Be honest. You ever, uh... <laughs> you ever take a Polaroid picture of your dick? And then go hide it in the books at the library for people to find? <laughs> yeah. Fuck no, dude. I don't own a panel van and strangle college girls on the weekend either, you fucking psychopath. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was a weird guy. Turns out he was way the fuck ahead of his time. <laughs> this was the era of the flip phone. This dude wasn't waiting for technology. It was like, Steve Jobs, come with me. Bring your turtleneck. We got shit to do. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. And I forgot to mention this at the top of the show, man, but you're in a safe space, okay? The Wildy Theater is like the Las Vegas of Edwardsville. <laughs> yeah, what happens here stays here, y'all. No judgment, judgment-free zone. We're all from different political, socioeconomical backgrounds, but tonight we're just one audience trying to have fun and enjoy some jokes, and we can all have fun. We can agree on that, right? Safe space. Yeah. <laughs> Let me agree on that, because I just, round of applause only, don't shout anything out. Gentlemen and gentlemen only, safe space. <laughs> round of applause if you've ever sent a dick pic. <laughs> One honest man over here in the wings. One honest man in the wings in a room full of fucking cowards, dude. <laughs> Lying, no good cowards. Sir, you've sent three during the show, I've had my eye on you. You have that popcorn bucket and a hole in it, I saw what you did. I saw it. Room full of coward. That's how you know it's wrong and it's gross. And I'll show you proof that I know you're all lying cowards because ladies actually know how to be vulnerable when given an opportunity and being in a safe space, which I've established we're in several times now. So ladies, applause, only applause, whether you ask for it or not, solicited or unsolicited, round of applause if you've ever received a dick pic. <laughs> this fucking creep sending his dick to everybody in town. Security! 
Of course not. He's a hero. We've already established that. Sir, I'm going to buy you a drink after the show because you are an American hero. If some shit goes down in here, that's the man I'm following because he knows who the fuck he is. That's who I'm following. That's who I'm following. Room full of cowards. I myself have never sent a dick pic. I'm not judging you, sir. You're a hero. That's been established. I simply lack dick pic confidence. I don't have that kind of confidence in my own penis. I want to send a girl a dick pic. I'm going to get a 3D tattoo of a much larger penis on my stomach. <laughs> the very least, the shadow of a larger penis to do some sort of forced perspective with my phone. <laughs> All right, sir. This is the one and only time I'm going to talk to the audience. But sir, you're already a hero. Don't try to play this up. What's your name, man? Blake. Blake, what's up, buddy? Yeah, you gotta have a cool name like Blake to send a fucking hog pick to everybody in town, right? Yeah. If he just said Francis, we'd have been like, bullshit, Francis. But he said Blake, we're like, yeah, Blake probably is firing off dick pics to half of Edwardsville. I believe that. I believe that that guy is doing it in perpetuity. I do believe him. Blake, you're already a hero. You are the best person in this room for your honesty and forthcoming attitude. I don't want you to try to be cool. I don't want you to try to be funny. That's my job. I just want you to give me an honest answer. How many pictures of your personal penis do you have to take before you're happy with the digital image that you've saved in perpetuity to hand out to all of your friends and family like business cards? Seven. Give it up for Blake, everybody. Seven. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. At least. It takes five to get the lighting right. We all know that, Blake. We all know that. Seven. The average answer is 15. That was something I did feel okay Googling in my own home. 15. 15 pictures of your personal penis before you're happy with the digital image that you can save forever to represent you over and over and over on every digital platform. 15. You have 15 tries. So do you guys understand the courage and wherewithal and good old all-American stick to that this American hero, Private Carter, had to have in the year 2000? To stand in the corner of a public library with a Polaroid camera and a can-do attitude and take analog dick pics one at a time all day long? He's like, yeah. Woo. Yeah, oh, that's gonna be a good dick in one to three minutes depending on the sunlight. Where should I put this? Oh, here we go, to kill a mockingbird. <laughs> That's better than anything Boo Radley stuck in the knot hole of that tree. <laughs> yeah, that was a Boo Radley reference in 2022. You're welcome. For those of you that read a fucking book every once in a while. I'm trying to go out and do some bucket list stuff since we all got out of Quar. I call it Quar to keep it cute. And... Tried to go skydiving not too long ago. We got any skydivers in the house? One very polite thrill seeker in the balcony. That's cool. Probably the last one off the plane, I bet. I'm jealous. I tell you, I tried to go skydiving. My friend got married. He wanted to do this for his bachelor party. Ten dudes going to jump out of a plane on Saturday and have a bonding experience. I did my job. I hooked it up. As I'm getting off the phone with the skydiving school, they tried to pull some sneaky shit on the back end of the phone call. They were like, can't wait to see you on Saturday. Oh, by the way, make sure no one in your party weighs more than 220 pounds. Side note, uh, I ain't clocked in at 220 since the seventh grade. <laughs> so to recap that story real quick for all of you fine folks here in Edwardsville of where I'm at in my personal development journey, uh, I recently found out that I'm too fat to fall from the sky. <laughs> That's a difficult thing to find out about yourself over the phone. So I got a little righteously indignant with this dude, justifiably so. I was like, 220 seems like an arbitrary number, dog. You just pull that out of thin air or something? He said, no, actually, for you to jump, you have to jump tethered to an instructor. And for two people to jump with one parachute, 220 is the max weight we deemed to be safe, which was a pretty good answer, but fuck that guy. I was like, I don't want to tell you how to run your business here, pal. <laughs> but half of America is obese. Are you telling me that you haven't developed some kind of Mad Max Thunderdome package? 
where I could jump out of this plane Master Blaster style with a little person strapped to my back? <laughs> Perhaps a dwarf for a proficient child. <laughs> we can hit the ground running, he can ride me like an Arkansas Razorback. I don't really get this <laughs> I just want to party like a normal sized person. So I stood on the ground and watched nine of my best friends jump out of an airplane <laughs> while eating a six foot party cell. <laughs> yeah, because fuck that guy, that's right. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I appreciate you guys coming out tonight, man. I really do. I'm a firm believer in karma. I believe if you're a good person, you leave a good life, you do what's right in the world, the universe will pay attention and pay you back. I really do believe that. I especially believe that if you're in a relationship. Sometimes when you're in a relationship, you gotta go do something you don't wanna do to make the other person happy. It's a sacrifice that you make and then you count on the universe to hook you up. By the looks on some of your faces, you're in the middle of that right now. <laughs> and I appreciate you being here. Now, you may not get a miracle back from the universe like you want. You may not win the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? You may not win the lottery. But if you pay attention, the universe makes little miracles just for you. And I got to put this theory to the test recently when my girlfriend made me go to a Renaissance fair. <laughs> okay, some of you are familiar with Ren Fair culture. Who here has ever been to a Renaissance fair? Yeah. Okay. For those of you that haven't, I can explain to you real quick what a Renaissance Fair is like. A Renaissance Fair is when a whole bunch of white people <laughs> go out in the middle of the forest and they dress up like different eras of history that only a white person would have been safe living in. <laughs> and a handful of white people say, fuck it, and come as a Star Wars character. <laughs> and one black dude shows up dressed as Skeletor from He-Man. I still don't know what the fuck that guy was doing there. <laughs> I assume some sort of field research for his doctorate at Howard and University and how crazy white people are. <laughs> but I digress, I love my girlfriend, she loves Renaissance fairs, I'm like, $40, universe, I trust you. Universe said, I got you, dog. I said, thank you, universe. When you go to a Renaissance fair, the big event is the joust, okay? It's huge, it's the Royal Rumble of the Renaissance fair, everybody goes to it. So we went down to the jousting field and a man came over the loudspeaker PA system as they did in medieval times. <laughs> and he said, today marks a very special day in the jousting arena for today marks the first time a lady knight shall pick up the sword and shield and ride on horseback. And the nerds went, Ape shit. There were corn dogs flying everywhere. And my girlfriend, who is a grown adult human with no mental deficiencies that I know of, turned around to me and she goes, Oh my God, do you realize we're witnessing history right now? Yeah, babe, I just tried to order a Dr. Pepper. They made me call it an apothecary pepper and told me straws haven't been invented yet. <laughs> this whole place is us witnessing history right now. <laughs> but I digress. She wanted to see how this joust turned out. And here's how they get you on the joust. There's a four hour halftime. I thought this was gonna be an in and out mission. And I was like, universe, what the fuck? <laughs> universe said, calm down, dog, I got you. And I said, okay, universe, I'm sorry for yelling. So to kill this four hour halftime, my girlfriend and our friends that we went with decided they were gonna go to a petting zoo. They said, Rafe, would you like to go to a petting zoo? I said, hold on a second, let me check. No, I'm not a five-year-old child, so no, I do not want to go <laughs> to a petting zoo. So they went to a petting zoo and I went and scored a turkey leg, which as a fat fuck was a highlight of my afternoon. <laughs> not gonna lie to you guys about that. When I say I got a turkey leg, guys, I'm not talking about a regular turkey leg like you get on Thanksgiving from your grandma. I'm talking about a human femur-sized steroid-injected turkey leg, okay? Like one the size of that big, fat, red wiffle ball bat that you used to have to give the special kid in your neighborhood so he could get a hit. Oh, you're gonna act like you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Oh, you posers. Everybody, everybody used a skinny yellow wiffle ball bat, but you had to give Mikey the big fat bam bam bat to keep the fucking game moving along. We all had a Mikey growing up, guys. And let me tell you something, if you didn't have a Mikey growing up, newsflash, you Mikey. <laughs> I 
And I'll talk slower. <laughs> but this turkey leg was pretty big, and I was like, okay, universe, this is pretty cool, I guess. And the universe said, no, 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 my son, I have so much more in store for you. And I was like, for real? And the universe was like, for real, dog. So I was proud of this turkey leg. I went to go show it to my friends, and they were already inside the petting zoo. And that's when the universe showed up and paid me back for being the best boyfriend who's ever lived. Because they were already inside, and I was trying to show off my turkey leg. When they were inside the petting zoo, they were talking to two adult humans who were in charge of three, count them, three red tail hawks. And the guy in charge of the hawks was dressed like Kylo Ren, and the lady was dressed like a pirate, because they didn't give a fuck about continuity. <laughs> And I yelled to my friends, what are you guys doing? And before they could answer me, Kylo Ren turned around with a hawk on his arm, and he goes, they're learning! <laughs> About the power and majesty of birds. So I held up my turkey leg and said, me too! <laughs> Mine is smoky and delicious. What have you learned? But before Kylo Ren could answer me, the lady pirate turned around and she just goes, hmm, that's quite a fine turkey leg you have there. Toss me a piece of it and I'll show you something beyond your imagination. <laughs> and I said, no. <laughs> You're fucking weird and this costs $7. <laughs> so no thank you, Willy Wonka, I'm good on your chocolate factory tour. But she wouldn't drop it. She was persistent. She goes, come on, toss me a piece of it. Don't you want to see something beyond your imagination? I said, lady, what kind of jack and the beanstalk to catch a predator situation are we in right now? I've already turned you down once on this turkey leg proposal. She came at me a third time. She goes, come on, everyone's watching. They were not. <laughs> toss me a piece of it and I'll show you something beyond your imagination. So I got freaked out, I threw a piece of gristle because it ain't my first rodeo. <laughs> and the lady pirate caught the gristle in midair. She put it behind her back and she winked at me for no discernible reason. <laughs> she turned to a full grown hawk sitting on a perch about where my water bottles are on that stool. And she just goes, Sebastian, mouse! And she threw the turkey and I want to pause this story for a second. <laughs> You guys ever been over to your friend's house where they got a toddler, like their kid, like three or four year old, and they try to bring them out in the kitchen to do something cute in front of company that they do in private all the time? But the kid's like, not today, bitch. <laughs> yeah, I got to see that, but it was the fucking apex predator. Because when the lady threw the turkey, she hit the hawk directly in the fucking face. <laughs> and I got to see one of nature's top predators reduced to this. <laughs> And I laughed so hard, y'all, from a place I didn't know joy could come from. Some place down in my kneecaps. And I was like, holy shit, universe, holy fuck. Oh, universe, I'm so sorry I doubted you. I didn't realize that I was the best boyfriend on the planet. And you were gonna show me the funniest thing I've ever seen in my goddamn life. I'm sorry I doubted you. You're a kind and just and wise universe. And I'll tell every audience from here on out what a great universe you are. And the universe said, ah, ah, ah. Wait one second, my son. There's more. And I was like, no fucking way, universe. <laughs> universe was like, way, dog. Because when the lady pirate hit the hawk in the face with the turkey, she picked it up immediately off the ground, turns to me with way too much confidence, and she goes, hold on a second. He didn't see it. <laughs> I said, lady, that's a goddamn hawk. You can see a mouse in the field from three miles in the fucking sky and you just hit it in the face at point blank range. I'm pretty sure he saw it. There's a character in Last of the Mohicans, Avengers, and an entire football team called Hawkeye. It's the most famous part of that goddamn animal. But she didn't listen to me. And she put the gristle behind her back a second time, winked at me again for no discernible reason. Turn back to this poor bird and goes, Sebastian, mouse! And she threw it again, only this time it curved and it hit Sebastian right in his eyeball. Which sounds super sad, but I assure you it was the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. Because look, you don't have to laugh at me, you don't have to think I'm funny, you don't have to like this story. 
that you at least have to laugh at the cosmic irony that I saw a bird get blinded with a piece of another bird because that is fucking funny. <laughs> that is hilarious. And I laughed so hard that I left my body for a second. I saw me and my giant wiffle ball bat turkey leg shaking in the breeze. And I was like, this is what it probably feels like to die. This is what being a ghost is like. And I was like, universe, <laughs> holy shit. I am so sorry I doubted you. Not only am I the best boyfriend on the planet and you showed me the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life, but just in case I missed it, you gave me my own personal instant replay. <laughs> I didn't deserve it, universe, but I accept it. And I love you. And the universe said, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, wait one second. I said, no fucking way. And the universe said, there's a little bit more, dog. And I was like, this is crazy, universe. The universe goes, it is crazy, man. Because the second time, the lady pirate hits a hawk in the face with the turkey. Kylo Ren broke character, which is a huge no-no at the Renaissance Fair. And he turned to the lady pirate with a hawk on each of his arms, dressed like a Sith Lord. <laughs> And he just goes, Samantha, what the fuck are you doing right now? <laughs> Trying to socialize these fucking birds, Samantha. It's not a mouse, it's a piece of crusty fucking turkey. <laughs> he forgot that he was in a children's petting zoo <laughs> surrounded by dozens of kids under the age of five. And I laughed so hard that I was transported out of my body to go up into space and live beyond space and time, to be at one with the universe, be in my turkey leg floating beyond the mortal coil at the eye of the storm where the Big Bang happened. And I was like, universe, have you brought me here to live forever for being the best boyfriend on the planet? And the universe said, that's exactly what I've done. And I said, oh, universe, dang. I wish I could stay, bud, but I don't think I can. And the universe said, why not, my son? And I said, because I owe somebody on earth a pretty big apology. He said, are you sure? And I said, I'm sure. And he shot me back to my mortal coil and I wasted no time, y'all. I bent the knee. And I said, lady pirate, <laughs> queen of the hawks, keeper of the birds, my turkey leg and I salute you. Because when you told me you were gonna show me something beyond my imagination, you were not fucking bullshitting, lady. <laughs> and I put that turkey behind my back, winked at her, and was like, Sebastian Mouse, and I threw that fucking thing as hard as I could. <laughs> I think we all know I ate that turkey leg, right? <laughs> I, uh, I got diagnosed with sleep apnea last year. Where are my apnea heads at? Yeah, not too loud. You might pass out. I get it. I get it. <laughs> You're very tired. I understand. Like, woo, oh, God. I pass away. For those of you that don't know, sleep apnea means I snore like a monster. When I say I snore like a monster, I don't mean that it's loud. Like, <laughs> what's that racket? I mean, it sounds like there's a monster in your home that wants to murder your entire goddamn family. <laughs> sounds like this. Sounds like my exhale wants to beat the shit out of my inhale. I'm walking up to 37 people giving me CPR. That ain't good for your heart or your self-esteem. I want you to bear in mind for the rest of this story that we put a Mars rover into space that can send soil samples back to Earth over light years. But the best piece of equipment we've developed for snoring is a little black box called a CPAP, C-P-A-P with a 25 cent tube and an aggressive piece of headgear that goes on my face all night long. <laughs> Scientifically speaking, it's a little better than cutting a hole in my neck and jamming a hollow bamboo reed in there. <laughs> so, if I'm lucky enough to take a lady home, <laughs> we lay together biblically, and it doesn't last as long as she'd hoped. 
but I got a pretty kick-ass personality. She decides to sleep over. I gotta have a pretty awkward conversation. It's typically something like this. I'm like, damn, girl, you're fine. You know that? You're sexy as hell. Woo! You look like an angel laying there. Mm. And I had a good time tonight, and I like our chemistry, you know. New beginnings. Where's it headed? Who knows? Life's crazy, right? <laughs> oh, God, you're hot. You're sexy. Beautiful. You look like an angel laying. What? I said the angel thing already? That's weird. You sure? I believe you. I believe you. That's weird, though. But I am glad you decided to sleep over. I really, really am. I'm excited about it. I'm pumped. I'm geeked. I'm through the moon. In fact, I can't wait to wake up in the morning and cook you breakfast in bed. <laughs> uh, but for the next six to eight hours, <laughs> you pretty much got two choices. <laughs> Would you prefer this? Would you prefer this? <laughs> you chose the dog, but I was born into it. <laughs> How do you like your eggs over easy? CPAP stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. But it should stand for Chase's Pussy Away Permanently. <laughs> or it is much better at that. Guys, I'm Rafe Williams. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you so much for coming. Entertainer all time.